And what a week it's been. I've made a lot of progress wiring up the batteries and even getting the inverters up and running. So here we go. I have been sick with the cold this past week, so I didn't do much filming for you, but I did take lots of photos. So let's take a look at what I've done over the last week with getting the battery bank up and running. First off, I crimped all of my battery cables. So I have four positive cables and four negative cables. These cables are actually uh, surplus military jumper cables. To recap, in this tower next to me, I have eight modules. Each module is 24 volts. They are paired together to create 48 volts. So I have four 48 volt batteries. Each of those has a positive and a negative, which needs to come down to a central bus bar. Now I made sure that they were all the same length. And I did that because I wanted the battery bank that was right here in the middle of the rack to be used equally as the battery that's at the top of the rack or at the very bottom of the rack. Now when I attached the negative cable, nothing special to it. I attached it directly to the negative post. But when I attached the positive cable, I wanted to fuse that right at the battery terminal. Here's the fuses that I used. These are rated for 150 amps, class T. Now these are fuses that I purchased from Alt-E, so they are a great fuse to use. Now I actually want to thank Lithium Solar, he's another YouTuber. Uh, and I was originally going to use an automotive style fuse here but he uh, told me about this style being HRC and why it's better and so I went with it. So thank you very much for helping me out with those comments. Uh, Lithium Solar and I will link to his channel below if you guys want to check him out. Now I didn't want to put a lot of stress on that fuse so I secured all of my one aught cables coming down uh, to that fuse uh, from above. So I strapped the cable in place and that way its natural relaxed state was right here where the fuse is going to be positioned. All of the fuses come down behind the rack to this central point. Now this is my bus bar location. I have two plastic boxes and I drilled holes in the side where all the cables can run in and I attach them to a bus bar. I stapled all the cables uh, to a block of wood to keep them positioned the bus bars that all the cables are attached to are actually a piece of copper pipe. It was one and a half inch copper pipe. Uh, here's a piece left over from it. And I had pulled it from a dumpster on one of the jobs that I was at. And then I soaked it in a plastic jug with white vinegar and table salt. And that cleaned it up. Then I brushed it, washed it, cleaned it some more. And they came out looking really nice. I then flattened it and drilled my holes. Now it is a little bit on the thin side, so I did order a thicker piece of copper, but it's gonna take a while to come in. And this will do fine just for the low amperage of testing the batteries, and I can swap it out later. After the bus bar, I added a 100 amp shunt with a little watt meter. Now this is temporary, and this is just for the purpose of doing some discharge testing on the battery. I have some cables going to the inverter. Now they are not staying this way. They are temporary just so that I could get everything up and running uh, for the purposes of starting to condition the batteries. So once I had the inverter plugged in it actually took me quite a while to figure out the menus and I want to thank Wes uh, for helping me out with that. Wes is somebody else on a Facebook group that I'm part of and he had some of these as well and had figured out some of the menu. Uh, one of the main things that I was doing wrong, I was not waiting. There's a five minute delay built into these things uh, between where you turn it on and before it will connect up to the grid. And it needs to pull electricity from the grid so that I could charge the battery. I wasn't giving it that five minutes, didn't know about it, so thank you Wes for pointing that out to me. Now the inverters uh, charged the batteries up to 56 volts. Currently, I have it connected to a uh, space heater right here, and this is my load, and I am slowly discharging the pack. This is at 15 amps on the battery side. It's pulling 800 watts on the battery side uh, to do this space heater on low. So I'm very slowly discharging the pack. 
Now let's talk a little bit about the conditioning process of these batteries. They sat over a year in a warehouse before I got them. And I don't know what kind of condition they're in. How good or how bad are they? So I want to be very gentle as I start the charging and discharging process. Now what I mean by that is very low amps. So what do I have? Well, they're in a conditioned garage, so they're at a steady temperature. I'm not overheating them or trying to work them while they're cold. The very first thing I did was charge them. I charged them at 10 amps. I have six total batteries connected. I have the four of mine, and I have two batteries that are actually my buddies, but I'm conditioning all of them together. So when I was charging them at a 10 amp rate, that was about one and a half amps each, 1.67 amps per 48 volt battery. So that is a very low rate. So I let it go that way for over a day, at that point, it was pretty steady and balancing out at 56 volts. I then switched to the discharge. Now, as soon as I put the discharge on it, the voltage dropped. So we probably weren't really at 100% full yet. So we're pulling about 800 watts, which was roughly 15 amps from the battery, uh, which means that's about two and a half amps per 48 volt pack. Again, because I have six packs total combined right now. So that is a very low rate. It's probably gonna take two days to do the, the discharge. Currently, as I'm filming this, I turned off the space heater just for sound, but we have discharged so far 19.2 kilowatt hours from the pack. Now I will stop the discharge when we have a pack voltage of roughly 48 volts. At that point, we'll switch back over to charging it. On my second charge, I'm probably gonna charge it at a little bit higher amp rating. So I might charge the total pack at 15 amps, which would be two and a half amps per battery charge. And I'll go back up to 56 volts and then put the discharge load on it again. I'm going to do this several times. So my conditioning process is probably gonna take two or three weeks to fully condition the packs to the point where I'm happy and will then put them into full service. But until then, I'm not going to pull big monster amps out of these guys. I wanna make sure that I wake them up very gently. Uh, if you guys know if this makes sense, uh, let me know in the comments below. Now, lithium iron phosphate has a very flat curve. My intention is to use these roughly around uh, 20% state of charge to about a 95% state of charge. I think that will roughly translate into 48 volts up to 56 volts for the pack. Remember these are 16 cells in series or 16S. So please let me know in the comments below if you think those voltage numbers correctly translate into roughly a 20% state of charge to a 95% state of charge. This pack is still very new for me. I've only had it connected to the inverter a few days, but there are already some things that I would do differently. I really enjoyed uh, putting together the copper bus bars on my buddy's packs, and I wish I had done something similar on my pack. So if I did this again, uh, I probably would have wired up the bottom four batteries all the positives together and all the negatives together made the bottom four modules all paralleled. And then I could have paralleled the cells on the side of the pack. The top four modules, I would have paralleled all of them as well. And then I could have made one connection in between the two and one connection back to the bus bar or the inverter. And with that, I'm gonna wrap up this update video for you. Thank you everybody very much for watching. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and check out the affiliate links in the description below. Those really do help out the channel a lot. Thank you.